gonna be ready in a minute. Waiting for my Americano activities. What we got? 44 people, that's cool. I hope one of our seats is ready. There goes the steam milk activities. NASCAR is indeed in Vegas. Did you guys check out the, uh, what was it? The car haulers? I thought that was cool. Unexpected, but awfully cool. It's gonna take me a while to get over to our spot. Berkebach, as always, thank you. my left hand is. Thanks, man. I'll see you in a bit. Left-handed. <laughs> Adequate sugar. All right. Oh, oh, oh. I'm like ninja walking. Not to take anything away from the mad skills, this is about a 150 foot walk. <laughs> oh, we got our spot. Nice. Oh, but it's dirty. You know what? I will I will camp over here until they come and clean it. Because I like this spot. Alright, alright. Oh, the sit, the sit. <sighs> Not a freaking drop spilled. I mean, that one, that one right there attempted to get away, but had it under control. I mean, that's spilling it now. Oh, ah, a little leakage. A little bit of leakage. Blomp. Alright. Let's do something real quick. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. I want to show you that I pretty much shaved my head. But no, it's not what we came for. All right. Let me go get some stuff. So I'll be right back. I got to get situated. It's like quiet on the strip, but it's kind of mobbed out down in here. some nice people a little while ago. All right, let's get organized. AMA day, my favorite day. My favorite streaming day. All right, there we go. Are we, are we organized? Yeah, we are thoroughly organized. Let me take this pack off. I got my sling bag. Let's get activated. Sorry I'm running a little late. I didn't expect to. It's a mob scene. Do 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 do. Almost ready for you. I gotta do something real quick, hold on. Oh, that's that's almost that's almost the way I like it. Wait, hold on. See if we could uh, initialize it properly. Searching for Wi Fi. How about 
Simons. Nope, not <laughs> quite. It's gotta go a little this way. Oh, look at all, look at all the stupid information you gotta put in. <laughs> yeah, okay. Like, that's important these days. That's what we need to worry about. Alright, let me fill this out real quick. Uh, let, me, let me give them a... Uh, let me think of one of my funny ass email accounts. Dude, dude, how's everyone doing? That was a fun live stream last night. What did we do? Uh, I went silent. I thought that was fun. I don't know if you guys enjoyed it, but I certainly did. Select country. Uh, let's see. United States, zip code 90210, Beverly Hills. Uh, date of birth, 1999. Household income, a million plus. Birth month, let's go with December, Christmas. Gender, that's an easy one. Let me double check, let me double check. Yep, still there, still there, okay. Male. Yes, I am 18, barely. Free Wi-Fi access enabled. Oh, I'm now online, sick. <laughs> you gotta jump through so many hoops. <sighs> I just freaking signed in. Alright, obviously there's going to be a little bit of pain in the ass. I don't want to delay any longer. Not one single second. Alright, how's everyone doing today? Let's get some coffee activities going. Let's get that off to the side there. Alright. How many should we do? I'm gonna freehand it. One, two. It's like a B-52. Uh oh, gotta come in for another pass. Ooh, that's fun. <laughs> gotta make everything a game. I think one more, I think one more. This'll be a low pass. Brady kicking off the super chat activities. Thank you very much. I do appreciate that. Alright. Let me stir. Let me ritualize this. Did everyone see my coffee grinding video I put on the Facebook group? <laughs> That's how loud that thing is. I mean I love it. Cause I you know I bought it for like ten dollars and it's a three hundred dollar uh coffee grinder but it's like loud to start the morning with <laughs> but it's fun and right, I'm doing stuff let me see if I can chew gum and talk at the same time 117 people that's freaking cool let me see if I missed any other super chats as I fixate on stirring I do appreciate that, Brady. You are awesome. Hope we get to meet and hang out again. All right. Let me inject some of this stuff in there. Plah! All right. Let's make a cat or a Christmas tree. Because I'm a freaking barista. So, so far the winds haven't hit Las Vegas, like they say, you know, the Nevada Power told us all to uh, be prepared for outages and to fill our bathtubs and to take all loose objects in and don't let our kids go out and play and they're expecting, I don't know, like gale force winds up to 75 miles an hour, trees down and all this other bullshit, but, um, huh. All right, let's get the bag over here. My v -goal. I love my bag. Good bag, good bag. 
But right now, it's 71 degrees out, and it's not a lick of wind anywhere to be found. All right, enough of this coffee activities. Bah, let me get up in the grill. Bah, oh, one more. Oh. All right, hopefully. I mean, I'm sure they're going to clean the table at some point, but... <laughs> Because this, this is a little cramping the style a little bit. How about this? How about, oh, there we go. Perfect. What up? All right, let's check the coffee. Good to see everyone again. Let me say hello to some people's while I got yous. All messages being engaged. You saw what I have pinned at the top there. That's a sign-up link for my own streaming platform, which should be live in about a week. So I'm really excited about that. I want to do it like on the first, you know? That would, like the first, uh, yeah, this is something about it, but it just wasn't gonna happen. So it's about a week. I gotta start doing some uh, streaming testing on it, but everything else here is good to go. Da, 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 da. Coffee cam, how you doing Venus, Angie? Uh, volcano at 8 p.m. I will show it to you tomorrow, I promise, because I'm not gonna be here till 8 p.m. But tomorrow, Saturday night, we'll go see the volcano. You know, it's probably gonna be alive for a little while. Linda, how you doing? Jim, Dan, BC, Maria, Angie. Chris, Nat, Frank, Joe Q, ooh, that's good. Oh, I just got hit with a freaking commercial already. RC Willie's Willie. <laughs> I, I still laugh at shit. Willie. He said Willie. What was that like? Uh, what? Like deep to some butthead activities. All right. I had a reset because every time I get a freaking commercial, I lose chat for some reason. Did I say Chris Nutt and Frank? I'll say it again. Double Eagle, yeah, I need, I got some shit to do tonight. So I, I haven't done it early in a while. It was cool because it was easy to drive here today. I just missed all the traffic. Trisha, I got that, thank you very much. I do appreciate it, love you. Uh, ba -ba -ba -da -ba -ba. Val Marie, Janice, Mary, Al. Are you still out helping the Las Vegas homeless? Yes, I just don't do it on the strip. there's not a lot of people here like um, I mean there are but the people who are left here on Las Vegas are of the uh, let's see they're either like heavily um, what's a what's a pro I, I try to think of these proper ways to say things like uh, they're out of their minds unfortunately you know they, there's a lot of mental illness and a lot of uh, pharmaceutical abuse with the ones that are here on the strip right now so i don't want to walk up to them and be like hey here's some soap they'll be like hey here's a steak knife you know what i'm saying so it gets a little weird but in my local area i do it all the time like all the time all the bodegas every time i go to walmart i mean i just carry stuff in the car so when i see people and i can stop i just pass stuff out so yeah still doing it and I will never stop. Kevin, what's going on? Or I said hello to Brady, and thank you for that five bananas. Yeah, Wi-Fi needs to know everything. You saw that, right? They, they want to know everything. But you know what I found out? I found the trick. When I used to put, um, I didn't want to tell them my income, they used to give me the shitty Wi-Fi, you know, just like base five by five. I put that I make over a million dollars a year, and I get the 50 by 50. <laughs> you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. What's up, Steven? Da, 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 da. Well, they want so much personal info, um, BC, because we're already doing AMA. Well, it's not me, but yeah, it's me. Because they market to you. Once they get a hold of your email address, they know what shit to send you. So I have like, I got like 30 or 40 email addresses that I rotate through and put all different crap in like this. And they do send stuff. I never opened it, but they do send stuff. 
so according to your income, you're giving them your demographic. So they're like, oh, I always put that I'm like 28 and I make over a million bucks and they send me like high-end Adidas commercials, <laughs> you know, things like that. You know, they try to figure you out and uh, market to you. Come on back because this store is having a deal because it's Simon Properties. They're like, you know, they're, they're the black R, you know what I'm saying, of uh, retail space. So yeah, um, yeah, <laughs> toss them all in. Tom Mac, what's happening? On it, I want to say hello to everyone. I want to get started. Mighty Bull is in the house. Janice. Ta -ta -ta -ta. Keith Bubba, what's going on, brother? Did I make a rhyme? Did I just drop bars? I do believe I got it. What's up, Scott? Okay. All right. So I think we're, we are in check here. I am ready to do some AMA activities. Let me suck down a little more of this coffee. Let me prop up my phone so I can see questions over here. This is freaking extraordinarily good lighting. <laughs> I don't know when they're going to come and clean the stable, but I feel a little too close. A little too close for comfort. All right, so today is AMA day. One of my favorite days of my streaming calendar. Um, so, I'm going to invite you to like, share, subscribe, and hit that bell button to get notified when I do this again, which is at least five times a week, and if you want to support the channel, you know how to do it, stuff, 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 don't forget Amazon links, I got all the, I got just about everything, but if you start your shop in there, if you do plan on buying something, I do get 1%, whether you buy from me or not, transparency, 1%, it used to be like 5 to 8, <laughs> now it's down to 1%, because they learned from the, the shutdown that they don't need influencers, per se. <laughs> so it's 1%. But every little bit helps because my channel is viewer funded, not, not ad funded. Even though they're going to like inundate us with ads, they just don't like giving me any of the money. This coffee is real good. I'm already getting a little hype. All right, so AMA, this is how we're gonna do it. Um, I will answer just about any question. You can ask about me, you can ask about the town, you can ask about the meaning of life, you could anonymously go get a, a phony ass Gmail account and ask me a question that I might help you with, you know, if you want some advice, because I am your life coach. Um, let's see, no date of birth, no social security number, no driver's license, uh, no credit card information, no home address information, everything else is free game. So go for it. Um, I do want to make a PSA first. Starting today, any comments that come in that are in all caps are going to be deleted. It's, it's preordained. So it's just considered, A, YouTube does not like it. They consider it spam. So if they don't get to it and delete it, the mods will. And if you do enough of it, the mods aren't, they're just going to delete them. But YouTube on its own will start deleting them. And if it's repetitive, they'll like consider it spam, you know, and like auto block said person for a given amount of time. It has nothing to do with me, but I just want to avoid that bullshit like right off the bat. So. All caps, it's considered rude, it's considered spamming, it's considered yelling, you know, and it's just weird. <laughs> you know, there's no reason to it. Cap lock button, you know, just don't press it. Other than that, so if your comment disappears, if you had your cap lock on, now you know. So from now on, that's just going to be the policy. All right, so let's scroll back to, uh, and Super Chatter questions will always get answered, and everything else, um, you like that, huh? Um, everything else will, if I find it, <clears throat> if I find it to be an awesome question and good content, something for me to, uh, you know, to, how would I say, expound upon, I will answer. What's going on, man? I missed you the other day. You left, uh, yeah, before yeah, I did, did you know? Me over at the, the main bar. All right. So. I'll catch you before you go. What time are you leaving? Uh, cool. All right, let's get back over, because I, like I said, I do want to answer. 
super chat of questions are awesome. Okay, Janice says, so many choices. Uh, what is one of the first topics I'm looking forward to discuss soon on the new platform? There's so much, and thank you for the five bananoramas. Let me heart and like that. There is so much to discuss. There's so much going on that we cannot talk about here. Like, um, okay, is Jennifer Aniston a man? That, inquiring minds want to know. We have to discuss that and look at pictures that I dug up. <laughs> you know, we can't do that here. Um, and everyone's going to be like, no way, not Jennifer. Have you been in bed with her? I haven't. <laughs> Um, let's see. What else? We could talk about... Oh, can we? Alright. In the 90s, there was a famous rapper, and he was really good friends with Notorious B.I.G. And, like, he goes by P something or other. Is he the next Jeffrey E? Or is he worse? We gotta discuss that. Uh, let's see. I mean, there's just so much. It's daily. I mean, once I go raw and uncensored, that's the name of my new platform, raw and uncensored, um, I can talk about anything and, and everything. And stuff comes up all day that catches my eye that needs discussing. Like, why is one of the three-letter, you know, the three-letter acronym agencies running around putting cuffs on journalists? Have you noticed that? That's kind of hush-hush, but they've, they've been doing it for like a week. We gotta talk about all that, and I ain't one of them, hopefully. <laughs> and I'm in a good mood, and I'm not going anywhere. Ah, this coffee's good. Uh, let's see, Tom Max says, Is there a song whose lyrics speak to me directly? Whoa, um, a lot, <laughs> a lot. I mean, believe it or not, even though it's like before my era, I still spent a lot of time around people when I was young who used to listen to Zeppelin. And when I hear Zeppelin, it's like, talking about me, Willis? <laughs> you know, like certain things that they have to say, you know, when the levee breaks and whatever, just hits. But, again, Pink Floyd, another one that I grew up listening to, they were like the classics, even though not my era directly. Um, the whole album, Pink Floyd, The Wall, speaks volumes to me. I, um, cause that is a, it, it's a story. From the beginning to the end, just like if you like that, listen to pros and cons of hitchhiking, same epic story. But, like, I understand what they're talking about. I understand exactly what they're saying and why. Um, yeah, I mean, it, <laughs> it kind of it hits a little different, you know? But, you know, building the wall around yourself, not letting people in, go, okay, I'll be a look. This is an AMA. Building a wall around you, not letting people in, keeping your guard up all the time, um, dropping it on occasion and getting burnt and building it three times thicker. Um, going off the deep end, you know, various bouts of self-control and discipline issues, you know, and, you know, some childhood stuff. I mean, you know, the whole pink didn't have the greatest childhood ever. Neither did I, but it was still cool in here, right? Um, and in the end, overcoming. And they showed the two directions that could be taken. One of which was he went full-blown, you know, you saw the hammers. He got very, from all those experiences and building the wall, his, his outlook on life became very uh, authoritarian, uh, became, you know, how would I say? felt he needed to control everything in order for, you know, like, being a Leo, I get it to a certain degree that, you know, all Leos, when we get together, we're just like, shit, they'd only let us take over the world for about a year, we'd fix everything, 
you know, <laughs> that sort of a mentality. Um, you know, but most of us have to learn over time to worry about the shit in our own backyard before we start, you know, addressing other people's backyards, even though we're well-meaning. So I get all that. So they showed how he can go extraordinarily bad, but then he has an epiphany, you know, a tear down the wall epiphany. And all those experiences that he had, how would I say, Rage Against the Machine said it right, anger is a gift. You know, if, if someone says, you know, you shouldn't be angry, that's bullshit. Anger is a gift. Anger is a motivating factor. It's a fire under your ass as well as everything else. It's rage, the extreme version of anger that's self-destructive. But to be angry is a gift. And if you don't believe it, you know, that's because you're experiencing rage, not anger, not true anger. Um, So he got angry enough, he got he got jaded enough, and then he had the epiphany that he should tear down the wall. But all that experience of harboring anger and you know learning how to navigate life ultimately turned into a good thing. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, that resonates with me hard, especially after I saw the movie. You know, I was just like, whoa. But I could think of lots of situations like that. And I do appreciate the question. When the levee breaks. Yeah, that's just awesome. <sighs> Alright, Maria Jose. This seems like <clears throat> a deep question. Do you find it morally correct to tell a family member of a friend remember a friend about their abuse of substances or does that cross the trust boundary hmm wow I've, I've been there <laughs> I have I've legitimately been in that circumstance um, I've attended you know I guess they call them interventions now I mean for all intents and purposes, they both turned into ass beatings because, you know, this person became beyond, these two people became beyond incorrigible. Um, I would say, that's, that's a rough one. You gotta ask yourself, how good a friend, you, you, gotta, you gotta look at it from all angles, because I'm a deep thinker. You gotta ask yourself, how good of a friend is it? And what do you want to accomplish by um, by doing this, you know? Is it for their well-being that you just care so much for them that you just, you know, you just want them to, to do better in life? Is it for selfish motivations? You know, at least they'll stop borrowing money from me and you know, blah, 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 blah. Um, is it like, what is the motivation behind doing it? does their family already have an inkling? If their family found out, what would be their response? Is there any way to reach that person without going to the family? If the family is aware, can they do anything about it? Or does it become an additional burden upon them? Because if they can't do anything about it, if they have no influence whatsoever over this individual that has the problem, then all you're accomplishing is burdening them with something that, you know, is beyond their control, you know? That's why it's not a great idea to just discuss your problems with people, because unless they, unless you're discussing, I'm, di I'm digressing a little bit, but that's my, that's what I do. Unless you're, um, how would I say? Unless you're discussing your problems with someone who can actually help, whether with really, really sound counsel or, you know, something, something tangible or extraordinarily wise, wow, this news is getting loud, extraordinarily wise counsel, there's no point in telling someone your problems because A, it's just giving them ammunition. 
even if they're a good friend, it, it drops you a little bit, you know? So there's no point. And then you're bur if there's nothing they can do about it, you're burdening them. Like if you need a hundred bucks, why go tell someone who needs a hundred bucks that you need a hundred bucks? Because then they're like, you know, oh, we're both broke, great. <laughs> you know, there's, 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 there's no point to burdening other people with your burdens. So I would say, um, view it from all angles. Why, why does that need to be done? And look at it, you know, put the person in the center of the circle and look at it this way from all put up you can even draw it put the person in the center of a circle draw a circle around it and write all the players around it and how it points back to that person and ask yourself why why you know what do i need to do why do i need to do this and how should i do it and the answer will come to you you know and put yourself as you go around that circle of, of uh, individual parties in this uh, thing guys put yourself in their position like should he or she's mom really know that she have the power authority control to help you know maybe she does <laughs> you know maybe she you know knows someone who can put him in a program or he or she I don't know but if not it's just gonna make her life miserable you know to know is she at risk is he introducing he or she so you gotta look at it both ways is he or she introducing elements of danger into her life you know does he go around her with people who are less than desirable is he he or she stealing money from the family they should know um, is he storing, he or she storing illicit stuff on their property? They should know, you know, because they don't want to go down too. So there's a lot of factors, so I can't give you a definitive thing other than the process by which to determine it. Only you know the exact situation, so you have to look at it. Like I said, dot in the center is the individual, draw a circle, and put all the moving parts on the outside and figure each one from both sides like that that's the way my brain works <laughs> if you want to know i just pretty much explain how my brain works that's how i arrive at uh conclude i mean i don't i'm at the place i've done it so much i don't have to draw it out anymore but that's how i arrive at decisions in my own life you know i mean i use a couple of like pre pre filters <laughs> like all my needs and wants parallel, you know, stuff like that. But, um, which is a whole nother subject. However, that's how I arrive at decisions, you know? That's how I know what I need to do and how I need to do it and who I'm gonna do it with or to, <laughs> you know? I just put myself in the situation between them and then I just weigh it all out, you know? Is this gonna be more beneficial or is it gonna cause more shit? Uh, is the blowback going to come on you? I mean, ask any 5-0 and they will tell you that, you know, every time the most dangerous calls that they get involved in are domestic because it's volatile. It's volatile. Like, if you go to the family, you know the family, I don't. So if you go to the family and you're like, hey, you know, Bob is like, you know, puffing glue in the shed. They might flip on you, you know? They might be like, mind your own damn business, blah, 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 you know? And you could have you could have five enemies on your hands, you know? Oh, you're spreading vicious rumors about our son or daughter. You don't know. So I, I don't know the circumstances. If I did, I'd give you like a little closer counsel, but you see what I'm saying? Weigh it all out, figure it all out, and you'll know. It'll come to you. Do something or nothing. Don't do anything in between. Something or nothing. All right. Was that a good answer? All right, cool. Uh, da, 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 da. What's the one thing I won't eat and why? You know, I... <laughs> thank you for the 10 banana rounds. I do appreciate that. 
I was thinking about that last night as I was looking through YouTube. Like, okay, food things aside, like, you know, gluten I can't have and shit like that, whatever. Um, to me, I'll eat just about anything. I'll put just about anything in my mouth, you know? I'm just not... I mean, when I hear people like, oh, this protein shake is gross, but it's good for you, <laughs> you know? Or, or you know, the concoction I make with the, the apple cider vinegar and the cinnamon and the honey and, you know, like the antibiotic I make, it's freaking gross. Some people would consider it salad dressing. I, you know, to me, it's like, ugh. But it's like, if it benefits me, I'm not worried about taste, you know, because I'm a grown-ass man, you know? Especially when men are like, ew, I don't like the taste, it's not yummy. I'm like, <laughs> go, get your, go get your test measured, bro. Um, but I'm digressing. However, you know what one of the, the nastiest things for me personally, because it was in an ice cream recipe, because, you know, they were spying on me. They probably listened to, you know, like my Google Nest and whatnot while I was making ice cream. And someone was making lemon ice cream. And I was just like, lemons gross me out. Lemons to me are the nastiest shit. I will drink lemonade. You know, you put enough sugar in anything, it's, it's halfway decent. But lemons has grossed me out. I mean, and I love tart. I love tart things. I love when grapes are like underripe and a little tart. I like tart things. I like savory things. I like sour things. But I hate, I hate lemons. I find lemons like key lime pie or lemon, like lemons. Like what? <laughs> I don't, I don't get it. I mean, I'm sure there's something to it, but I mean, I've tried it. I got a lemon zester at home I use for oranges and stuff, but I, I can't think of one reason why I'd want to put a lemon in it. Oh, put some lemon on top of that fish. It's going to be delicious. <laughs> Get that shit away from me. Like, take it back. You, a lemon is near it. Just, I just, I don't find anything redeeming about a lemon. Although, however, when I was in Florida, and I had a tree one time, when I moved, I gave it away, and it was like, they show me pictures, like once a year, I was producing fruit, a Myers lemon. They were like this, they were like freaking avocados, and they had like this kind of sweetness going on, which was kind of good, but a lemon, <laughs> just like, no, I just, I mean, <laughs> but that's, that's the best answer I have. Everything else is fair game. Not so much, uh, oh, lemons. <clears throat> Alright, uh, let me see if I missed anyone. Alright, we'll go back to, oh, I see a super chat question from Maria. Have you ever thought of becoming an actor? Uh, you are very impressive. Expressive. Yeah, I am expressive. I do. But sometimes I can be, like... See, Tiege Hanley did such a good job here that it's starting to... <laughs> Tiege Hanley, link in the description, it's starting to take away my horns because I was... This was my... This is, this is me. I mean, not all the time, but... <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, I, I, I had a scowl on for years and years and years. But, yeah, I am kind of expressive when I'm in the right company. Even though this is on the other side of the glass and there's a hundred and something people watching, I still feel like we're just hanging out at a party or whatnot. Um, have I ever thought about being an actor? No. Um, I mean, I've done modeling, you know, and stuff like that. I've done some voice acting. I mean, I, I would probably do it, you know, because I'm a ham and whatnot. But I don't like scripted stuff. I mean, I don't like scripted stuff. And I see that. Whose hair is that? Is that a hair? I don't think that's a hair. Ew. It was on my hand. Um, 
um, I don't like scripted stuff. Like when I can do, uh, I can do a reading. Like I can put something in front of me and read it off, but I have to put my own inflections. You know, I did the, you know, how the Grinch stole Christmas and Twas the Night Before Christmas and so, bleh, a couple of my videos I've done, uh, you know, readings and whatnot, semi-scripted, but I still have to improv. You know, I just don't have the, the patience, you know, the mentality. I, I think I'd be, I'd be like too diva. I'm too freaking diva now, but to like toe the line and say lines exactly the way they're supposed to. And I'm more of a impromptu, off the cuff type of dude. I, I'm rehearsing and all this other shit. No, I couldn't do it. And despite what people say, it is work. You know, it is, it's, if it's not impromptu, take after take, because I, I was in the, you know, the video business for so long, to put together, you know, like take it, like, okay, two people having a conversation in a movie, there's one camera over there, there's one camera over here, they're going back and forth, back and forth. Sometimes that you see the people sit down in a restaurant and then you see the conversation, sometimes that one scene of, say, the woman or the dude took place like two weeks ago. And they're stitching it in, and it's it's um it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. I'd rather be on the other side of the camera than in front of it. You know, I just like being off the cuff and super impromptu. So that's why you know I don't do those you know those videos about oh that's why I want to go into the Bellagio like when they do the spring display, and I'll just be like oh shit this is cool. <laughs> and I wonder if this is alive because I'm more of an experiential person where like other people's takes and other people's channels are like, well, October 1st at 2 p.m., uh, they use 1,441 and a half marigolds to complete it. <laughs> that would, I can't do it. Maybe I'd have a uh, hundred thousand subscribers, but I can't do it. I mean, that just has no interest in me whatsoever. I just want to go experience shit. You know, oh, this concrete was poured in 1968 at the temperature of 92 degrees, and it has a PS. <laughs> it's, it, it's not my jam. It's not my jam. Yeah, Hemi Cuda. Ah, yeah, <laughs> that would be my jam right there. Stephen J, thank you for those 10 Bananaramas. When my wife and I are in town, we enjoy getting out and driving around the Vegas Valley to eat, shop, golf, etc. Any favorite local restaurants of yours that you can recommend? Um, I'm not a huge restaurant person, unfortunately. Um, so that, I'm a little, uh, ever since I saw that hair, I'm like wigging out a little bit. That, I'm not, the Urban Rye is good. Been there, done that, thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, I'm not a huge restaurant person, so I'm not the, uh, the, the uh, how would I say, the source of truth when it comes to restaurants. I do eat uh, at some of the restaurants here locally. I love Bavette's. I do love uh, Mayfair Club, two of my absolute favorites here in town. Uh, Palms, which is over here, sucks. Um, don't go there. I mean, it's okay, but, you know, whatever. As far as local, um, I mean, a good, hearty breakfast, a lunch, like, um, diner style, th this is where I go. If I feel like having a hearty, uh, money's worth, I don't think I could finish it level breakfast or lunch. I've never been there for dinner. I go to um, Blueberry Hill. I mean, I, I do like that place because they give you a lot of food. It's courteous. It's very local. There's one on Decatur and Charleston, kind of, and there's another one on, I'm trying to think where it is, on Flamingo, not Flamingo and Decatur, Flamingo and Jones. So a little off the strip by three miles and two miles. But you get your value. Um, it's cooked right on the grill by short order cooks there. It's like a, a diner you'd find in just about any town except it's got really good food. Can recommend. I've never had anything bad there. You can go in quick, 
sit at the bar if you want. I mean, the bar is relative. I don't think they serve booze there. But you can just walk up, you know, you don't have to wait for a table. I, I highly would recommend that if you want to start your day or adventure looking around. Just find the Blueberry Hill and um, you're good to go. As far as golf, I mean, I've played a lot of golf in this town. Um, a lot. If you can get on the Winds course, that's a beautiful course. If you can get on Bally, uh, Bally High, that's a great course. And believe it or not, the Munis are nice. The, what I do like about the municipals in, in town, which there's one on uh, North uh, Valley View. What I do like about that one, which makes it, it's old, which makes it so much different from every other freaking one in town, it's got trees. It's got trees everywhere. It's got trees that, um, it's got like, uh, what do you call them, live oaks? Like you see in Florida, it's got pine trees, it's got, it's got shade. <laughs> I guess that's what I'm getting at. You could play that golf course um, when some of the other ones are just too freaking brutal. You know, like uh, the ones like the wind. It, there's not a tree on there. You're just gonna sit in the sun and scorch for five hours. This thing's got shade. It's got shade on the tee boxes. You know, you're in the fairway waiting for some people to get off the freaking green. You can just like chill under a tree a little bit. And both of them are like that. So yeah, I do, I do highly recommend checking out the the munis here. You know, it's a good value, and like I said, they're shaded. And they're in good condition too. So I hope that answered that. Alright, what else are we talking about? I found my thrill home blueberry hill. I had a friend who had an 87 Grand National with the turbo in it. That was cool. I've never played TPC of Summerlin. I've never ever, I've never played there. I hear it's a nice course, but I've never played there. I've sat around there. I mean, if you can get on, um, I used to live at Canyon Gate. They got a great golf course over there. Checking over my shoulder. I don't know why I'm like getting the creeps for some reason. <laughs> yeah, Canyon Gate golf course is awesome, but you gotta kinda know someone to get on there. The Grand National. Alright, let me, let me scour up some new questions here. Da, 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 da. You're welcome. Blueberry Hill's cool. I mean, piles of food. You know, you order like, you know, it's got the plastic covered menus a la like, uh, you know, Howard Johnson's and whatnot. You know, it's kind of like that. But they give you like a pile of food for like 12 bucks or something. You know, you can stick the rest in your pocket, but it's a great way to start the day or just sometimes chill out. A smooth peanut butter. Uh, Tom Mack with the two banana rounds. Thank you very much. I don't like, <laughs> I don't like mixing textures. Like a lot of people, when it comes to food, they'll be all about like, oh, the texture of this and the tech. Leave my texture consistent. I don't like messing with it. You know, I don't like, I don't like Rocky Road ice cream. You know, it's like. It's dissolving in my mouth and suddenly I gotta chew on something. It just breaks, it just dings my karma. You know, nice smooth peanut butter and then I gotta chew it a little bit. The only thing that I like that has weird texture is kiwis. Like it's so smooth and then popping those little seeds you know, on your molars and whatnot, it's kind of fun for me. But yeah, and you know what peanut butter I use? Um, shit, I forgot the name. I get it off of uh, Amazon. It's an all natural, but they've been out of stock for like three months. Forgot the damn name of that. But the second best, believe it or not, is, um, what the hell's the name of that one? Second best is Walmart Natural, believe it or not. All natural smooth because it has the least amount of crap in it. It's like got three ingredients. Palm oil, which isn't great for you, but it's only like 5%. And you know what, it sits at the top, so the minute I open one, I let it drain. You know? <laughs> so now I'm down to like 2% because it, it just surfaces because it separates. So I pour all that shit out. Um, and it's got some sugar in it. That's a given. But yeah. Uh, let's see. Linda, Broar, Mopar, Boda, Chevy, and which make or model? Um, let's see. 
I'm more of a, I mean, believe it or not, I'm more of a, if I had to choose between them, I've had, I've never owned a Mopar in my life. So, however, I like all, I like them. I think they're cool. Cudas and Chargers and Challengers. I just never had the opportunity to own one. So, I mean, I would get like, you know, one of the new ones. I love the Challenger. Or is it the Charger? I think it's the Challenger. Or the new Cuda. I, I think they're just freaking sexy. That wide ass stance. And, yeah, I would get one, but between a Ford and a Chevy, I would have to go with a Chevy. I almost got into a fight in freaking North Carolina, in Raleigh, North Carolina. I, did I ever tell you guys that story? I walked into a bar and the first thing they said to me was like, Foe the Chevy. I'm like, what? And they're like, Foe the Chevy. Chevy? Because I did own a Suburban at the time and I was renting a, a Chevy. And they, they welcomed me in with open arms. They were like, all right, cool. And I found out that was a like a, a Chevy bar. I didn't know there was such things, but if I said Ford, they probably would have beat my ass. I don't know. Fought my way out of there. But yeah, I would say make a model would be tough. I mean, one of my favorite vehicles ever was an old Suburban, like the old body style from like 50 years ago. I had one of those. I lifted it just enough so people didn't think I had a, you know, a, you know, problem, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Not too high, but just enough. That was just the most reliable vehicle I ever owned. It had a 350 in it. I rebuilt it myself, you know. I, I, I want to do everything at least once. I rebuilt an engine, you know. It took me like three days, purred like a kitten. You know, put an Edelbrock manifold, <laughs> all this shit on it, made it go a little faster. But that, that was probably my favorite vehicle I ever owned. But then, you know, my Fiero was awesome. I've owned so many cars. I don't think I could say I have a favorite. Long term, eventually, I gotta somehow, some way, I gotta drive a Range Rover for at least a year. All right, let's see. Rocky Road is no, I don't like chewing ice cream, bro. <laughs> Just don't. I don't like. However. All right, the only ice cream I will break down and have full knowledge that I have to chew on it is, um, you like that trick? iPad. Um, pistachio. I like pistachio ice cream, I think it's cool. All right, let's see. Ah, da, 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 da. If you had no worries whatsoever, Val Marie, member for 12 months, thank you very much. I do appreciate that and I do appreciate you. If you had no worries whatsoever about money, what would you be doing if not what you are already doing? Um, that's, that's a really interesting question. That's, a, that's an interesting, if money was no object. Um, I wouldn't exactly call it venture capitalism, but or probably maybe angel investing would be a little more accurate because there's so many people out there with such good ideas. Not ideas that are gonna bring down humanity like a new AI chat bot, you know? Like, I was on some website today and it was like, oh, chat with uh, support. And this AI is talking back. It gave me some legitimate answers, but for the most part, I'm like, I wanna talk to a freaking human, you know? I'm, I wouldn't involve myself in anything that I think would be thwarting humanity, but there's people out there with genuinely good ideas, you know? I've had so many good ideas in my life, you know, that could have, like I always say, I invented freaking YouTube. I don't care what YouTube says, I invented you. Um, I've had a lot of good ideas that were too ahead of that time because of the way my brain works, you know? You'd think I came from the future or some shit, but nobody would give me the time of day because you know why? No one wants to lend you money unless you already have money. That's just a fact, <laughs> you know? You, you, wanna, you want money? Have your own. People will throw money at you when you have plenty of it. When you have, you don't have a pot to piss in, Nobody's gonna give you another pot to piss in. It's just the way things work. Everyone wants to wait at the finish line. Investors want to wait at the finish line. Sorry, Val, but women like to wait at the finish line. Um, 
but you know that's the way it is I would like to be someone that people could sit down with me and be like I got this idea and I wouldn't be like oh, I want 51 percent you know and I'm not talking like Shark Tank but I would want to help people establish um, businesses that I thought had genuine social value that could improve humanity and not just on a social justice SJW level, you know? Oh, I figured out the social credit score system, you know? No, no, But something that would really help, you know? Something medical, something, something that'll technology or something that actually helps people's lives, you know? But they just, I mean, people, there's, there's kids, there's old people. I mean, there's like 80 year old people out there coming up with a genius idea. No one's gonna give them a frickin' dime because they're like, hey, you're half in the grave, you know? We're not gonna follow through on that. I wanna hear everyone's idea, whether they're 80 or 8, you know? Money was no object. And I would help them, you know, I would help them help humanity. So, yeah, Al Gore. Al Gore, yeah, okay. <laughs> he invented the end. Invented shit. Now, what did he tell us? Like 20 years ago, we're all gonna be underwater. Yeah, all right. But that—that's what I would do. I would be an angel investor. Yeah. Yeah, pistachio ice cream is pretty good. Pistachios in general are pretty good. I'm just—I can just get down with them. All right. Send me some more questions. Cause I'm about to like get me some more coffee. Because, you know, coffee number two is always more fun. And what do I mean by women standing at the finish line? Um, <laughs> we got to talk about that. I was the one who brought it up. No one asked. Uh, I would say... Thank you, Val. Okay. Um, men don't care about a woman's future. They care about a woman's past. Women don't necessarily care about a man's past, but they care about a man's future. Hence, waiting at the finish line. They want to see who wins, you know? <laughs> they, don't want, they, don't, they don't want to be standing on the sidelines, get, well, with the bottle of water, you know? And like, you know what I'm saying? They'd rather, they, they want the winners. <laughs> they, don't want, they don't want the people who are coming up and whatnot. Oh, this guy has potential. No, they want, they want the guys who run the race and won, you know? But that's 100% normal, you know? Because they want the best possible outcome for their families and their, you know, their offspring. So it's a normal reaction. I'm not knocking it. But women like waiting at the finish line to see who wins, you know? And But that's why all women are fighting over the same dude. There's only so many winners to go around. But every woman wants a winner. No one's willing to settle for second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth place dudes, you know? They all want the winner. That's why, you know, winners, maybe the top 10% of all men are banging 90% of all the women. Because they're in, they're in demand, you know? That's why it works out that way. And that's why women are, like, disappointed. They can't get that dude, you know? They're not willing to... You know, the standard's a bit too high. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Not everyone could have the guy who crosses the finish line. You know, sometimes you gotta take the guy who finished last, you know, if he's compatible, you know, whatever. You know what I'm saying? That's all I'm saying. Does that make sense, everyone? Da, 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 da. When was the last time I looked at Invictus? Um, as we talk, we're talking watches, I'm still, I'm still like, I'm not over this thing quite yet. So I'm not ready to put on the, uh, I was wearing two for a while. And people like, cause I love, I don't give a F. I like jewelry and shit. <laughs> you know, I ain't gonna lie. Um, Quality, unfortunately, is starting to go down on Invictus, you know, so I prefer to like, kind of, I wouldn't say, okay, I wouldn't say the quality. They've lowered the price, so the parity between price and quality is okay, you know, it's still a good value, but, you know, they're making them a little too, uh, 
they want to make them too accessible. You know, like you can buy an Invicta Pro Diver, brand new, for 49 bucks. What the hell are you going to get for 49 bucks? <laughs> you know? I mean, when they were like 100 bucks, 150, 200 bucks, you know, they were made a little different. A little different movements and such. But at least, you know, you, could, you know, people could buy a nice watch for 100 bucks, you know, and enjoy it. So on that side, am I still boycotting slot machines? For the most part, yeah. You know, F slot machines because they're 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 getting predatory. I'm not saying I haven't stuck any money in them. I mean I do on occasion. I think I stuck like 40, 40 bucks. <laughs> I stuck a whole forty bucks and I played an eighty-eight cents uh <sighs> matter of fact when I was at no it was sixty bucks. I stuck in Durango. And I played one of those firecracker things because I saw they were all topped off. And when I got down to like 20 bucks at an 88 cent bet, hit all three of them bastards and cashed out for like 160? No, 140. Scott, Scott Raleigh was there, you know. He was like right there when it happened. Um, and I got the hell out of there because I felt, I always say that. If you, if you win, you beat the odds, get the hell out. But, um... They're just getting too predatory for my taste. There's just no, there's no fun. There's no, there's no nothing anymore. And so, they're not giving you the value. It's friggin' predatory. So I would say stay the F away from slot machines. Learn how to play, if you want to play games, play video poker, but not those stupid arcade ones. <sighs> My shirts match my eyes. You think I'd do that on purpose? Hell yeah. <laughs> da, 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 da. Well, yeah, I got some I got some huge Invicta watches. I'm like the bigger the better, the tighter the sweater type of category when it comes to watches, but you know, you never know. You could be walking along, you know, I have one that's like this big, the Venom. It's like this big. And if you ever notice, I wear all my Invictas on my right hand, but my other watches, because if I wore an Invicta on my watch hand, the giant three eight, you hear how loud that is? Three eighths of an inch knob would like cut one of the veins on the back of my palm. How you doing, Allie? Good. I think we got a new coffee coming. Um, so I always wear them on this side so that the knob's over here so my hand doesn't go numb after an hour. But you never know. You could be walking on the beach, right? And suddenly, the Navy SEALs pop out of the water in black, you know? And they'd be like, bro, we need you for a mission. And if your watch can't go 300 meters under the frickin' ocean, how are you going to get back to the submarine? So you have to be prepared, you know? You need one of those watches that can go 300 meters. Because you never know when duty will call. Right? That's, that's what you tell your checking account when you write the check for a Venom. Come on, Haley. A high value woman. Yeah, high value woman. You, you get most dudes. I say, I say most, most. So I can only speak for most dudes. Can't speak for them all. Thank you for the two banana apples. Let me heart and thank that. Um, yeah, we, we don't care about a woman's future. <laughs> because it's with me. Why would I care about a woman's future? Because if I plan on, like, being with her, I'm going to be, you know, I'm going to make the future happen. I'm going to endeavor to give her... You know, the things that make her happy and, you know, the white picket fence and all that other shit. I'm not waiting for her to do it, so why should I care about her future? Oh, I hope she gets a doctorate. That way she gets a rate. <laughs> I got my own money right, you know. I don't, you know, we all know a woman's money's hers. <laughs> you know, what's, what's yours is both what's hers and what hers is hers, you know. Because they, they nest egg, you know. It's not your money. So why do I care about a woman's future? I care about her past. I don't care about her future because I'm going to provide her future. But her past goes to character. 
I don't want, I would never be with a woman who has a questionable past. Bottom line, you know? Because that just goes to character. The past is indicative of what you could expect in the future. How's the expression go? Can't turn a hoe into a housewife? Facts, you know? It's just that. So men, good men, care about the past. Don't care about the future. Oh, I saw, I saw some slide by here. Hold on one second. Ta -ta 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 -ta. Angie, member for 11 months. Thank you very much. It's been a fun 11 months. Thanks, bro. How would you rate your week? Um, I would give it, I would give it like it began on a three-star level because I was getting frustrated with the level of, uh, like this whole, it's, there's so many moving parts in getting my platform set up that I find myself dealing, and I hope you're listening, because I'm going to look right at you. The corporate gaslighting situation is out of control. The well-meaning, freaking huggy-huggy, let's have another meeting about the meetings meeting. Fuck the meetings already. I'm tired of meetings. Everything we've discussed, I'm not talking to you guys, I'm talking to one specific person out there. Everything we've been discussing for the past two months could be handled in an email. Yeah. And you know it. I'm not your calendar fodder. Don't let... Okay. Now I'm talking to everyone out there. Don't let anyone turn you into calendar fodder so they can look busy. Oh, look how busy my calendar is. Oh, look, look, look at all the meetings I have. Shut the fuck up. What are we talking about? Alright, so that's how my week started. But my week's always good, so I rated uh, a three. However, the past couple of days, I've honed in on... I know you're supposed to do it at the beginning of the year, blah, blah, blah. What do you call those? Um, New Year's resolutions or whatever. But I really, really honed in on my goals for this year. You know, because I've been just... It's been a whirlwind past couple of months, I really, really honed in on my goals, uh, financially, personally, uh, professionally, spiritually, I just, physically, I honed in on my goals because I finally got around to taking them out of what rattles around in my brain and putting them on paper. Paper is powerful. You know, it, it, if you do everything on your phone, Um, it's not going to happen, <laughs> you know, let's just face it, because phone and digital and all that doesn't reinforce it the way putting it down on a piece of paper and making it happen, because it's something tangible. It wires our brain completely different than taking notes on a phone or taking notes on your iPad or whatever. That's, that's, um, how would I say I don't. Nope. How would I, how would I say? That is, uh, I mean, I'll take some ice cream, give them samples away. What is this, Costco? <sighs> it's, uh, not circumstantial. There's another word I'm looking for. It's, uh, I'll, I'll think of the word in a second. Or maybe not. It's not real. It's just, it lives there. It does not live here. But there's something about writing it down that makes it more real, more accountable, and more everything. Um, frick, I forgot that word. Anyway, so I wrote all my stuff down. I, I finally got around. I, I still buy, I buy these big... Um, what do they call them? Like five subject notebooks? They used to be 99 cents in the dollar store. I bought like 10 of them, you know? And I got one in like every room, <laughs> you know? And each one has a different thing. This is for YT, this is for this I, other ideas for videos. This is shit I need to do. I, I, can, I keep calendars. As much as I keep a calendar on uh, the phone and everything, the, the alert pops up, then it disappears and you forget anyway, because it doesn't matter. 
you know, because what happens on these things don't really matter in the grand scheme of things, unless you're using people for cannon fodder, which makes you an asshole. Um, I mean, not cannon fodder, calendar fodder. I still use a calendar. I got one in the kitchen. I got one in one of the bathrooms. And I got one in my office. And I, I physically write shit on there. You know, keeping track of what my grocery spend is, and I keep I keep notes on it. You know, it's not because I'm old or old-fashioned or whatever. Not even circumspect. Um, there's another word I'm looking for. Um, shit, uh, it'll come to me. I've always had a problem with this one word, but it means a lot to me. Thank you, my friend. Don't mind if I do. Thank you very much. Coffee time. Or part two of the coffee is always good. Um, shit, that's bugging me. But yeah, I keep track of everything on paper and pen and whatnot. So I committed all the things that have been rattling around in my head for the past couple of months. To actual paper and I got to look at them and some of them were some oh shit moments you know I found I was off track on something I was committing to and got me back on track so I feel good yeah I mean sticky notes yeah I mean there's just some talk to any psychologist psychiatrist whatever the heck and they'll tell you you know the brain functionality of digital versus physical is completely different and one is better than the other. So all these kids and all these people who are so dependent on digital everything, their neurons aren't uh, as developed as someone who's, you know, works on paper and pen. Just not. Just saying. Not organized, expedite, happenstance, no. Um, what... This word always, I, I gotta, I gotta write it down. When someone is uh, talking about something, but it's just their own stupid little experience, and they translate it into a general thing, uh, you know, they're trying to validate like an entire issue based on, well, I know, I know someone who turned a dollar into 10 million. Does, does that mean everyone's gonna do it? What, what's the name of people who do that? Uh, I think it begins with an S. I don't know, whatever. Not semantics. I mean, that that's another pet peeve. I hate people who are into semantics. That, that's, just, that's just like mental midgetry. Oh, that's like well steamed. This is so loud. Yeah, see, and seeing it on paper with a pen, it, it makes it more accountable. Because when it's on a digital format, you can backspace, you can delete, you can copy, you can paste, you can alter, you can move it to the next day. Oh, I didn't do it today. Let me just move it to tomorrow. But when it's on paper, you're kind of, you know, you're committing to it. For the most part, I mean, you can still be a lazy bastard, but not solidify. What the heck is that word? But, you know, that's a problem with all these iPad kids. They're growing up with their brains not wired correctly, you know? Oh, uh, this is like full to the friggin' brim. Let me see if I can show it without spilling it. I hear Celine Dion freaking well in the way in the background. Oh, that's good. I spilt a little. Alright, hit me with more questions. I will not grab it. I, I gotta I gotta think about it. Not solidify, um, it's one of the, it's, it's something that annoys me. I've said it before. 
if you approach me, if you want to debate me, I'll debate anyone, but don't approach me with, I mean, I know what I'm trying to say. Now it's, now it's driving me freaking crazy. End the show. Bro, for the job. <laughs> Could be the caffeine. Not projecting. Oh, that is so good. I hit it with the right amount of cube. Because the cubage is variable here, you know? Because they're different sizes, so it's not like, you know, it's not like I know exactly, but I hit it right this time. Now we're gonna have fun. Um, not semantics. Semantics, oh. Yeah, Celine Dion, I've never liked any of her music. I don't know who it is. Answer is don't come with me. Yeah, but no friggin' BS. <laughs> this is like. This is like when you have a, an earworm. Oh my god, not Edify. Would I ever play pickleball? Um, probably, but I think I have to wait. wait you gotta be like what? Like. You gotta be like able to qualify for like senior living or something? Or is that like a young person's thing? I would, I would play football. When I was a kid, we used to play, uh, we didn't play squash, but we used to play racquetball because, you know, you could, you could afford one of those because in, in New York, in the boroughs, every school, like back in the day, every single school had a handball court. Every single one of them. Every park, every, everything had a handball court. So you grew up playing, it's called American handball, where you'd have to hit it up, you'd have to hit the ball to the ball first, and then Chinese, where you'd have to you'd hit it down, you know? Like, the older you got, you had to play American, but as a kid, you just didn't have enough slap, and your hand got, like, freaking granite, because you're hitting balls with the palm of your hand and stuff. And then we used to play asses up, you know? So whoever lost, you used to have to stand against a wall, you know, assume the position, then everyone used to get a turn, like hitting them with a ball. You know, it's supposed to be like hitting them in the butt or the back with the ball. And then we graduated to racquetball. And racquetball was fun. But to get beamed in the back of the head with a racquetball, that would mess you up. <laughs> that would give you some permanent freaking brain damage, you know? So, yeah. But I, I guess I play... Pick I mean, isn't pickleball like squash or something? I don't know. Well, oh, a racquetball? I don't know. I always thought, like, when I first heard it, I was like, how the hell do you hit a pickle? You know? Doesn't that, like, squeeze through the frickin' net and all that? I don't know. Yeah, dodgeball. Dodgeball's a trip. How many of you used to play that when you were kids? Can, can you still hear? Okay. Close your mind's eye for a second and listen to the sound of the dodgeball beaming off someone's head. Boing! That's that like, kind of weird, you know, like dodgeball was always like where shit used to get settled, you know, when I was a kid. And I see on dodgeball gym day on Wednesday, <laughs> you, know, you just you just seek to mess another individual up with a freaking dodgeball, you know, akin to like dirt bomb fights and whatnot. Have a dirt bomb fight? Oh, did I just grow up special like that? We had dirt bomb fights. This has got the teeniest hole. I can't even get my finger in it. So that's like using all my muscles. And I'll pink you. I have some medicine bowls. I do. We used to play a game called Suicide, where you stand facing the wall and, yeah, I mean, that's, yeah. <laughs> How about Saluji? You, you, you people know what Saluji is? It's like a form of monkey in the middle, but a little more uh, gangster. I don't know, I, I don't even know who invented that, but growing up, you used to have a game called Saluji, where you'd take someone's shit and you wouldn't give it back and you'd have to fight everyone to get it. That was Saluji. Uh, foosball. The foosball was not a thing when I was a kid. Well, I mean, it's not a New York thing. I don't know. If you dodge a wrench, you can dodge him. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. It's Saluji.
Do, do, do you guys ever heard that, Saluji? What was the arcade game you couldn't stop playing? I was a master, a master at missile command. You know, where you have like the three towers and you used to have to spread your missiles like full burst. And, the, and you'd have to intercept the, the missiles coming in. I was really good at that. Friggin' missile command. I was good at that. Asteroids, I mean, these, some of the asteroids machines, we used to have to play in the bowling alley. They were like 20 years old. <laughs> they didn't really, didn't really work all that well, so I never really got good timing on those. But Missile Command, you know, that was, that was a fun game. Yeah, Missile Command was the joint. All right, more questions. Galaga, yeah, I've seen that. Um, Asked Centipedes, yeah, I've played that. But Missile Command was my jam. Remember playing a game where a rope was tied to a pole with a ball? Yeah, I think that was Tetherball. Foosball is good. Uh, do I like anything from Tom Ford? Uh, are we talking clothing or are we talking clothing or fragrance wise? I'll let you know. I mean, I love Tom Ford suits, but you know, they entry level five grand. You know, it's like a little yikes factor. I don't like the tick, the separate ticket pocket, but when you have a separate ticket pocket, it screams Tom Ford. So even though it's not a good look, I'd still get it just so everyone could know I'm wearing a $6,000 or $10,000 Tom Ford. But I, I, I kind of like this stuff. Fragrances. Um, I have a couple of his. Hold on, I'm answering some of the email real quick. <laughs> Forgive me a second. This guy no afford. Talk amongst cells for a second. I have a couple inspired by, believe it or not, that are pretty decent. That was about tonight. I had to do that. I do apologize. Alright, let me get back over to me. All messages. Okay, what were we talking about? Tom Ford. Okay, Tom Ford suits. One day I'll have to get my one Tom. When I get a Range Rover, I'll get a Tom Ford suit. Remember when, like, back in the day, you used to be like, um, oh, look at this guy. He thinks he's special with that $1,000 suit on. Now, that's like normal, $1,000. So now you have to say, look at that. This guy thinks he's special with that $5,000 suit on. That's freaking inflation. You had to change our entire expression. Look at him with that $2,000 Armani. Wanna be gangster looking him out for. Now it's like five grand. Like, that's entry level into looking like a rich asshole. <laughs> I don't wanna look like a rich I do. Ain't gonna lie. Okay, uh, Tom Ford fragrances. Um, I like, I don't know if you could even say it. I like the smell of effing fabulous. It's good. And I do like the smell of, and I do own tobacco vanilla. I have some of that. And I bought it off. I. There's ways to buy it. That's all I'm gonna say. You know, like, not I'm not talking about hot. It didn't fall off a truck. But there's other ways to buy the stuff if you look. Jamba. Um, it's, I like it. I like it a lot. But the reaction is sometimes mixed. Sometimes the ladies find it a little too... Uh, some women find that a little too overpowering. Like, what do you call this like that, too? Um, how would I say? Van Cleef and Arpel has the same kind of dark, 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 manly, musk kind of humidor-ish thing. But women, oh, I've never met a woman who doesn't like that. But Tom Ford, uh, Tobacco Vanilla, 
it's it's pretty powerful. Some women um, actually get a little like off by it, so you got to use that very very sparingly. But I love it. Dun, 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 dun. Um, let's see. So it likes nobody. What's going on? Good to see you. Have I? Yeah, I took pilot lessons. I mean, I was going for my uh, small plane license, but it just became. Um, well, it was expensive, it was very cost prohibitive, and the time factor that they wanted to have me on was different than mine. Like, I, I could not commit to doing it like, the proper way to, to do it would have been to do it like, one bare minimum, once a week, or twice a week, to take the flying lessons, get the hours in, get the training in, get the time in. Um, that would have been the right way to do it because it's fresh and whatnot. Um, I couldn't commit to it. I, I tried. I did it for. I got. I got almost halfway through getting. Uh, you know, getting the certification. But then it was like every. I kept canceling every two weeks, and it was every three weeks, and finally they were just like, nah. <laughs> they dropped me as a student. Then I picked it back up again and all this other stuff. So yeah, I, I have flown planes. Like, I mean, every dude, I always say, every dude thinks he can land a plane. You know, I mean, but we probably can, you know, in the grand scheme of things. I think that's just wired into our DNA. Like we're sitting in the back of a 747, and you know, they're like, oh, the pilot ate the fish. Is anyone who could, thinks they could land this plane? Well. Most of the man buns and the, the dyed hair dudes would probably be like, Ugh. but most <laughs> man's men, they'd, they'd be like, we'd be up to drawing straws for who would want to do it, you know? Because we'd all be like, I could land that freaking plane. Easy shit, I've seen it on TV. You go like this, go like that, whatever. Flip a few buttons here and there, land that shit. Every dude thinks he can land a 747. Um, every man's man can, and he probably can. I think I can. So yeah, if there was ever an emergency on an airplane and they were just like, who wants to land a plane? I'd be like, I'd do it. Tell me what buttons hit. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Take some selfies while I'm doing it. But yeah. But I have, I have flown. I have flown. And I have taken um, a couple of private planes here and there. I didn't fly on them, but I've been on private planes. I've been on Gulf Streams and whatnot. And they're pretty, <laughs> gotta admit, it's pretty freaking cool. You know, took a Gulf Stream from Florida to Augusta, Georgia for the Masters, you know, in, when the hell was that? 2010, 2011 or something? Yeah, it was fun. Let's see, yeah. Da, 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 da. We're talking about brute cologne. <laughs> I have an old bottle that's like someday I gotta get rid of all this shit that I save, you know. Some kind of sentimental about certain things. Um, I have a one of my uncle's bottles of brute cologne. Like when they used to make them in glass and they used to put the medal like the metal medallion around it and whatnot, because it was his. Yeah, the original axe. That's funny. English leather, yeah, and can you canoe, <laughs> all that stuff, Stetson, how a man smells, yeah, so, you know, bottom line is, yeah, I, I can fly around, uh, Tempest was my, what was Tempest, I don't remember that one, Tempest, 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 I don't know, we used to hang out in an arcade, that was at a bowling alley, right, when we was kids, and one day, we hung out there for years, like for years down in, they had like a basement and whatnot, and they had an arcade, and like, we got to the point where our, how would I say, our spirits, our enthusiasm, our personalities outgrew the place, so we became like a little too larger than life to be hanging out in an arcade, and one day we were hanging out, like they had a... There was a parking garage behind this place. Yep. And they sent out all the, like, the place was run by, um, 
these here people, you know, because we knew some. <laughs> you know, they, it was some people's dads and shit. And they were just like, um, they tossed us all a beating. You know, they came out. It was like the, it was like a scene from a uh, Bronx Tale where the bikers were, you know, like locked in the bar and shit. You know, they're like, nah. you know, with uh, Chaz, he's like, and now you just can't leave. <laughs> and he locks the door, you know. It was, it was like straight out of that shit. Because we were at the stage where we, we weren't kids anymore and we weren't quite men yet. And... It was like an awkward thing, but you, you can't relate to being a kid anymore, so we all thought we was tough guys and whatnot, you know? So they came out and made sure that they knew that we weren't tough guys, you know? They're like, you guys are acting all tough, you're like barely out of fucking diapers, you know? So they tossed us all a beat. Okay, whatever, so a bloody, battered bruise, you know, whatever. And then afterwards, like, the, the guy who stood back, you know, he was like the, the head, you know, you know what I'm saying? So he stood back. He didn't. He didn't toss no fists, right? So he just stood back and watched us all take a beat, right? And then when they was done beating our asses, he walks up. You know, they're all out of breath and shit because they're all like 250 pound guys. They want to get back to their salamis and whatnot. So then they come to us and they're like, um, he, he walks up and he's like, I think it's time. You go and find something else to do. <laughs> like, life does not revolve around this bowling alley. My life does, but yours doesn't. It's time for you to use all to grow up and, uh, you know, do your thing. But not here. You know what I'm saying? We don't want to see you around here no more. Get a life. Grow up. Be men. Start your life. True story. True story. Like I said, <laughs> I know it's been broken like 10 times. Mont Blanc is good. I haven't tried the, any Jimmy Choo fragrances. Hmm. Have you ever gone to an air show? I've been to, okay. I've been to, uh, I used to go to at Jones Beach on Long Island. They used to do an air show every 4th of July. And some other times too. Like here they do the Thunderbirds all the time. Out there they used to do uh what was it? The flying the flying angels or something? The blue ones? That was the East Coast thing. So I used to go there all the time. They used to like buzz the beach and go so close to the water, the water would come up and suck behind the planes. It was pretty freaking cool. Yeah, I think it was I think it was that was it. But I've been to so many out here. I photographed, uh, I, I, shit, I used to get paid by Nillis Air Force Base to photograph the air shows here. And so I show you some pictures. I mean, I, and they ended up in all their magazines and stuff. Yeah, it was cool. I, I like air shows. I think they're cool. I'll just show you some quick ones. Let me see. I gotta scroll all over the bottom of it. Yeah, check these out. I'll do it this way, I'll do it this way. Be in that gas. Those are all from Nillis. Look at those captures. <laughs> I got the afterburners in there. I did those with like, look at that. That's me. This picture is all over the internet. They just freaking photoshopped out my trademark. But that is all over the internet. Look at that. Afterburners engaged. Look at that thing. It's that freaking boss or what? Yeah, the belly of the beast. Look at that. Pretty sick, right? There's one that made a cover of an Air Force magazine. Let me see if I can find it real quick. 
I actually got to stand out on the tarmac to do this picture. Let's see if I can find that. Quickly. Do, 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 do. Hold everything. I'll find it. Oh, that's a cool one, too. Look at the belly of this one. <laughs> that's sick, right? I was right out on the airfield. I wasn't standing on the sidelines. I was all up in the grills. Oh, yeah. His, his, look, this picture made... I got a couple of awards for this thing. And it ended up in uh, one of the big Air Force publications. Look at this shit. That's nuts, right? Raw. Let me see if I have to find some other ones. Yeah, so Astro's a cool. <laughs> to answer your question. Yeah, Astro's a boss. <laughs> you checked me out before I broke my arm. Rah. Big old guns. Ah. Let's see if there's any other ones real quick. I can show you. Who can guess what this is real quick? Alright, I'm, I'm gonna show this to you real quick. This, this things we could talk about on uh, on my own platform. We can't talk about here. Do 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 don't worry, nothing, nothing to see here. That's just vapor in the sky. <laughs> More stuff to talk about. We just can't do it here. Oh, there's a cool picture. Wait. Come on, focus. Bro, I heard it. Took that picture. Pretty cool, right? See if there's any other ones real quick. <laughs> That's when you're into crystals, but someone needs their chakra realigned. <laughs> I just thought it was funny. And you guys do know that if it wasn't for Lucille Ball, Come on, come on, Lucy. Come on, Lucy. There would be no Star Trek. You know, Lucille Ball was responsible for Star Trek, right? Now you do. Now you know. All right, what the hell are we talking about? More questions. More questions. Yeah, it's, it starts with a C, H, and an E, and an N. Yeah, it's just, just bug spray. It's vapor. It's vapor. And you know what? That was just a weather balloon. It was an amateur weather balloon from a hobbyist. Just happened to happen at the same time that all cellular service was disrupted. <laughs> this, is, this, this is the stuff that we got to talk about. I love Lucy. Yeah, she she freaking saved Star Trek. Da, 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 da. All right, I'm checking out new stuffs. <sighs> what time is it? What time do we start? Oh wow, that was good. that was good. Yeah, but people cannot talk about it here. Alright, I got, I got time for a few more questions. I just got a response to my email. So I got like, uh, I got a little more time. Blue Angels. Correct. Blue Angels. Thank you. Yeah, it's the Blue Angels. Out here, it's the Thunderbirds. It's like an East Coast, West Coast thing, you know? Thank you, Jim. I 
I've never, one year, I remember on the 4th of July, they had the Blue Angels flying around, and then they did a firework show. And it literally took, we didn't leave until like the following morning. It was, we were trapped at the beach. I mean, you, it, it sounds nice in theory, but everyone tried to be the first to get out of there. We were just like, oh, let's all run to the car. But once we got to the car and started moving, it, I spent, I think, eight or nine hours in a car moving like a foot. You'd say, I'll just freaking leave the cars there. But you couldn't because you were moving about a foot every five minutes. You know, you'd see everyone's brake lights change and everyone would go a foot and then stop again for 10 minutes. So you couldn't leave the car there. That was like one of the worst experiences of my life. Trust me, I never did it after that. I have done a lot of things in New York. Like I've seen the firework shows in Manhattan. I've gone to, you know, all this stuff. Um, St. Patrick's Day, you know, in New York. You know, people just barfing all over the place. Like, I don't know. I did all that. Watch Aviator. Aviator? Yeah, I will. 4.30. It's time to get ill. Yeah, I like that. It's time to get ill. I still like the Beastie Boys. Beastie Boys. Oh, the Blue Angels are navy. Alright, that's what the difference is. Alright. Do, 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 do. How many states have I traveled to? Just about all of them. It just, I, just about all of them. I've driven cross country back and forth five times. So that's ten trips east to west, east to west. And I've been to just about every state. Some I liked, some I didn't. But I, just about all of them. I can't think of one that I haven't been to. Been in Minnesota, been in South Dakota, North Dakota, Utah, Washington, Oregon, Colorado, Illinois, Ohio. I think I've been to every state. I mean, just driving from, you know, New York to Florida, you hit that whole batch. Yeah, I don't think I missed many. Been to Arkansas, been to Texas. Yeah, I think I've hit like every state. Except Alaska. I do want to go to Alaska. Thunderbirds are F-16s and the Blue Angels are F-A-18s. F-A-18s are just boss. They're freaking huge. I don't know if people understand how big those things are. They are freaking huge. Have I ever gone to Long Beach? No, I have not. Yeah, I heard about that. Yeah, Howard Hughes is a weirdo. He's responsible for half of this town. He's a freaking weirdo, though. But I haven't seen the Spruce Goose. I saw it in that movie they made about him. You know, where they show how he, uh, you know... Yeah, I guess it was CGI, but... Yeah, I would like to see that one day. What's going on, Mike? Alright. Alaska in the summer is beautiful. I, and I do want to take a cruise to Alaska. Like, I could take the train up to Oregon, then take the the, the boat, cruise ship, whatever the heck it is, up to Alaska. I want to see that, you know? Ever since I saw the ending of Tombstone, where Wyatt Earp was sitting on the bow, like, you know, like he was freaking Leonardo DiCaprio with his woman there and whatnot, and they were just, like, cruising up to Alaska, I was like... I can get down with that. I want to go take a cruise to Alaska. I don't know. It didn't look that cold <laughs> from a ship. I do have a friend who lives in uh, Ketchikan, and he keeps inviting me up there. He's like, dude, gotta come to Ketchikan. I'm like, eh, catch me if you can, like the gingerbread man. <sighs> ba 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 ba. digging it, Jim? Yeah, I'm digging it, too. I think we covered a, a vast array. I, I love these M AMAs. They make me think. They make me, I don't know, I just pick on, like, 
they, they put me into my stream of consciousness that I enjoy, you know, just going with sometimes. So yeah. It's the salmon capital of the world? I didn't know that. He's I don't even know what he's doing up there, but evidently, I mean they went up there they went up there in two thousand because of Y2K, they thought the world was gonna come to an end and he moved his whole family up there and he's like a union worker down here. And he's doing good up there. You know, they went from like, you know, renting some, you know, shack to he built his own house now and you know, he's living like the Ponderosa. I should go up and see him. I don't, I don't really remember him. I couldn't even say what friends. I was, what, 25 years ago? But, you know, whatever. He sends me a message every once in a while. Uh, Joe with the two banana ramas. Thank you very much. Have, did I ever have a rabbit's foot? Yes. Real ones and, you know, and the other type with the keychain and whatnot. Because, you know, whatever. And I was never a paper boy. I was just, I was never ever a paper boy. I, what did I used to do as a kid to make money? I used to mow lawns and I used to like uh, pick up groceries and stuff for all the kumas and the kumbas in town and whatnot. You know, make a couple bucks here and there. Um, but no, I never did the paper boy thing. You know, I wasn't like, I wasn't about getting up at freaking four in the morning or nothing, you know. In the neighborhoods I grew up in, you know, I didn't want to like be riding my bike, you know, <laughs> in the dark of the morning and whatnot. So, no, nah, I never did that. Did never do that. When was the last time you played a record? Wow. When my mother died, because when we cleaned out her place, um, she had a record player, and she had all her, you know, records and stuff. And, you know, I did put one on in her honor or whatever, but my sister ended up with it. But, yeah, that was the last time. That was shit years and years ago. So I can't even remember. Like, myself, no. Thank you, Salt Lake Snow Bunny. I got some pictures in uh, Salt Lake. I got some pictures from, yeah. I've been to Utah several times, many times, actually. Yeah, Leonardo DiCaprio did do a good job. Leonardo DiCaprio is a, a good actor, but everyone, like, beats him up for, like, you know, not dating women his own age, which I, I don't get why. But whatever. Because they all want to, like, you know, they're all just mad. <laughs> they're all just butthurt. But her, ooh, I just got a pop-up. Um, is it? No. Hold everything. W, ooh, the W, I just got a notification that the WPPI convention, the photography convention is starting. No way. So we're going to the convention next week. We're going to the convention next week, the WPPI convention, and we are going to, uh, where the hell else are we going to? Oh, we're gonna go see the, uh, on the 6th, we'll see the, the Mint 400 vehicles come up the Las Vegas Strip. I'll do that live, too. Oh, today is the first day of Women's History Month. Whoa, no way. We gotta do all the histories. What is an acceptable age to date? What is an acceptable age to date as a successful man? And in terms of what the female should be? Um, I don't know. Um, depends on your age per se, but. Uh, I'm a big fan of, you know, if you can, you get the lowest mileage you possibly could. Just like buying, you know, it's like when you get I mean, I hate to relate a woman to a car, but I'm making an analogy here. So, you know, take it down a notch, everyone. 
um, you know, you get the least amount of mileage that you do. I mean, if you if you have a Range Rover that has 50,000 miles and you have a Range Rover that has 6,000 miles on it and the price difference really isn't that much, which one are you going to get? You're going to get the one with the lower mileage, you know? That's what I would say. <laughs> that, there's my dating advice, lower mileage. Um, but you know what I mean by mileage, both mental and, you know, whatever, you know what I'm saying? I would say 25 and up, you know? I would, yeah, 25 would be about right, you know? Yeah, 25 and up. You hit your peak, you settled in, you're like, you know, now I'm making my bucks. I've had my experiences, you know. I know the difference between right or wrong. I'm highly desirable because I got, you know, I got coin, <laughs> I got knowledge, I made success, you know, I run with, you know, my peers are all successful, so I am a man of value. So yeah, you should, you know, nothing wrong with it. Age difference, that's all I'm saying. Should you date someone, just go and find someone your own age at that point? No. I mean, yes and no. It depends. But, you know, <laughs> you're in demand. If you're successful, you are in demand. It's, it's, a, it's a buyer's market at that point, you know? So you can be a little more choosy and looks, whatever, you know? Just don't be, you know, obese or anything. <laughs> and you can have everything from a freaking 18-year-old to an 80-year-old. So what are you going to pick for yourself, you know? That's all I'm saying. I got nothing against uh, more mature women, what, women whatsoever. But, you know, as long as it's not, you know, as long as it's not like a lot of drama and a lot of high mileage and a lot of mental scars and a lot of crap, <laughs> you know, because that's kind of what you get into, you know? So... I mean, but then again, you gotta say these days too. Some of these young, younger women are out there doing some outlandish, whole-like behavior, you know, that you equally want to stay away from. So I don't know, you know. But all I'm saying is, just I wouldn't rush into nothing. Successful puts you in the top percentage of all men. So pick whoever you want, <laughs> you know. And if they don't feel fortunate enough to have you pick someone who does. That's what I'm saying. Hmm. Oh, no kidding. Why is my chat not working? Oh, there we go. My chat, it, it constantly freezes whenever I get a commercial. That just blows. Ooh, that sounds good, though. Yeah, you know, I mean, how else do you describe it? Do, do you want, you know, do you, it's, it's high mileage. It, it just is. <clears throat> you know, a man of, of any success. It just makes sense. That's how the male brain works, though. You know, we, we're not like saying women are material things, women are property, women are like cars, but we can't help our nature, you know? I mean, if you're gonna, would you buy an old tire that's almost bald, or do you want one with some tread on it, mentally and physically? It's just, it, it's just, um, it's just natural. You know? And the way the male brain works, you know, there's certain things that men and women cannot get away from. You know, women's, you know, urge to nest. That's why I don't fault women for waiting at finish lines, you know, to see who the successful dudes are. I, I've said that. That just makes sense. Um, I'm not faulting anyone for that. But at the same time, you can't fault a man for looking younger because it's our nature, because we're looking for fertility and lower mileage even if our brains don't know it our genetic makeup does you know because it, it's just the way you know it's just it's just the way we're designed you know you're looking for fertility and you're not going to find it you know in, in past a certain age you know 
I mean, anything past, I mean, fa there's a term, geriatric pregnancy. Mm -hmm. That's everything from like, I think they lowered it from 35 to 32 on. They call it a, they call it a geriatric pregnancy. And women are like, oh, I gotta, I gotta do my career. I gotta, I gotta get this degree. I gotta climb the corporate ladder. Oops, I'm 35, geriatric pregnancy time. <laughs> you aren't designed to have kids when you're freaking 37. You're supposed to have them when you're 22. <laughs> 22 to like 26. You know, that's the way your bodies are designed. And that's what men look at. You know, we're like, oh, fertile. I'm not saying we consciously go, ooh, she looks fertile. <laughs> it's a, but it's a wiring thing. It's how we don't know why we're attracted. Other than, you know, whatever. But we don't know. We're not like consciously going, oh, fertility. But it's a wiring thing. Just the way women are wired to look for men who can be good providers. It's just the way it is. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, mileage, I think I'm leaning more heavily on the sexual mileage, you know, than the experiential mileage. Yeah, but I wouldn't want a woman who's just like, duh. But at the same time, you know, it's, you got to admit that, and I'm not just talking about from a sexual standpoint, and then I'm going to wrap this up. Um, da, 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 da. Okay, I just got another message back. Um... I gotta think about what this person just said. Hold on a second. Let me, let me uh... Okay. You gotta admit, guys. And I'm just talking about on a boot knocking level. But it's awesome. It is awesome as a man to be able to introduce a woman that you're with or want to be with to a new experience. It makes you feel good. You know? It makes you feel good to be the first dude who put her in first class, the first guy who, you know, did this, the first guy who ever, you know, did the, this or that or slept at the beach or, you know, you, it's just an amazing feeling to be a woman's first anything, you know, and I'm, I'm not even talking about in the boot knocking category, but that's pretty freaking awesome too. Um, that's super awesome. That's like the best kind of awesome, but I'm digressing. But just in life's experiences, be the first person to, you know, take her to a specific restaurant or be the first person to have her fitted for a, an evening gown she always wanted or be the first person to, you know, play pickleball <laughs> with or whatever. It's, it's just a great feeling as a man to have introduced an experience to a woman. It just feels good. You, you take pride in that. It feels awesome. It's a bonding experience, the whole bit. Um, you know, but when a woman comes pre-packaged with experiences, what, what are you gonna show her? What, what experiences are you gonna show her? Like everything you try to do, she's gonna be like, been there, done that, been there, done that, been there, done that, been there, done that. So there's nothing you can you can do about that. You just you just what another stepping stone in her life, you know? I mean that's why I would never like fellas never let a woman pick out your clothes. Never let a woman pick out your cologne ever, ever, especially in the beginning. Just don't. Huge red flag for various reasons. Cause it's gonna dress you like the last dude who fucked her, you know? Just don't. Just don't do it. Unless you have no pride <laughs> in yourself, you know? But I digress. But if you can't be the, the first in anything in our life, sexually, experientially, financially, nothing, then find someone who you're the first in something with. <laughs> you want to be the last? Okay, this is what you do. So a woman has all this experience in life, in business, in sex, and the whole, she has five kids already. So you're accepting being last. You are her last in everything. 
You're the last guy. Oh, that, and some guys take pride. Oh, I'm the last because I'm the best. No, you're not. Because she's thinking about some other dude, you know, the whole time. She's settled for you. Um, just because you're last, that, that's kind of degrading as a man, you know? You're just the last. <laughs> you know? Oh, my God. That's bad because there's nothing you can do for her. There's nothing you can share with her. There's nothing she can learn from you. There's no experience that could bond you together. And you're constantly gonna be competing with her past. Who wants to do that? <laughs> you know, screw that shit. That's why guys go, that's another reason guys go younger. Because there's still shit you could teach her, you know, and show and teach and grow together as a couple. You know, when some woman is constantly, yeah, I've been to Aruba. Cross that up. Yeah, I've been to Bermuda. Yeah, I've been to Hawaii. Yeah, I've been on a yacht. Yeah, I've been for on a cruise ship. Yeah, I've been to England. Yeah, I've done this in bed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, number one, you're constantly reminding the dude how many men you've been with, number one. Because the, the minute you say, yeah, I've been to Hawaii, the, right away the guy's going to be like, with who? And it's a no-win situation, because if it's a dude, he's going to be thinking about that. If it was all your girlfriends, he's going to be thinking, ah, it was probably girls' weekend trip, you all got banged. It's just the way we're wired. We might not say it, but it is the way we're wired. So if there's nothing you could share, or any first, then it's pointless. In my opinion, that's just my advice to you guys. If there's no first left, if she's experienced at all, Move on to someone who, uh, who you can teach. Thank you, I appreciate that. I'll look at you. Got my blue eyes going on. It's hard for an independent, what is an independent woman? All right, let's talk, that'll be the last thing we're gonna talk about real quick, because that irks the hell out of me. I'm a strong, independent woman. I don't need no man. Yes, you do, number one. You, you know you do. But, what is an independent woman? Let, let's just let's wrap our heads around that. Oh, I pay my own bills? Um, I got my own house or apartment? I buy my own clothes? I pay my own cell bills? Oh, you mean you're an adult? <laughs> you mean you're an adult? Okay. So, a strong, independent woman is like saying, I'm an adult. I do what everyone else on the planet's doing. I do what, what men have been doing since the dawn of fucking time. And, and you want a reward for it. I don't get that whole strong, independent woman thing. It's like, uh, what, the, the Disney lie about, you know, how women are, you know, can beat up a room full of 50 men and then go sip tea afterwards. I mean, that's a fantasy. You know, and there's other things women could do better than men, but fighting ain't one of them, you know? Anyway, um, so what is that? So being a strong, independent woman means you're an adult? You know, what, what, is, what does that mean? Because I don't need no man. So you're fixing your own plumbing? You fixed your own roof? You changed your valve cover gasket? What, what? Oh, I'm not depending, oh, because you got finances. So you made enough money so that you could pay men to replace a man you don't have, so you have to pay for a husband, but you don't get the dig. <laughs> I don't get the concept. I don't get the, well, whatever. I do, but I like kind of needling it. Oh, but there's a, there's a company out there with all women plumbers. Where? <laughs> what is that, 10 in the entire country? All you ladies are using them? I don't think so. And then on top of that, some dude's probably paying your paycheck. So you'd rather serve a man so that you can buy your own bag. So either way, oh, but I work for a female-owned company. But I bet the bank... But I'm strong and independent. You're a 
freaking adult. <laughs> if, if, if men aren't sitting back there like, oh, give me an award. I, I, I have my own car, my own apartment, and I, I, I pay my cell phone bills. Where's my award? I'm a strong, independent man. No, because if you're not, you die. <laughs> We've learned that 2,000 years ago. If you don't do your shit, you die <laughs> in the street, and no one cares about you. People step over you. So now women want, like, an award for doing that, what's called being an adult. I don't get it. But I love you. I love women. I freaking love each and every one of you. But I gotta, I gotta, keep, I gotta keep you honest, though. I gotta keep you all honest. And that's what we're gonna talk about on the new platform. Yeah, you hire someone to fix shit, exactly. So, so if a guy hires someone to, uh, you know, knock boots with, it's the same thing. Because we can fix our own plumbing, but, you know, maybe I don't have time to get, you know, hook up with someone, so you pay someone. You know, it's the same thing. So it's reverse prostitution when you're paying other men to do stuff that you're, a man who loves you would do. That's all I'm saying. Because a man who's, like, in love with you will do anything for you. He'll fix your pipes and shit. Both of them. <laughs> you know, so the fact that you have your own money to pay a man to do stuff that your husband ought to be doing, what what is that really what does that accomplish? You know what I'm saying? What is that what does that prove? Who's who's the winner? Who's the winner in that scenario? I don't know. That's all I'm saying. Joe Ha value women vacations and yeah I mean the whole girls night out shit that station up frame it she the drywall yeah I'm sure there is but it's never gonna become mainstream it's never gonna be a thing that's always gonna be the anomaly you know it's always gonna be the but it's the it's the battle cry of women there's one crew in America that it's all women and they build houses <laughs> Okay, <laughs> that's kind of, that's a novelty, that's cool, it's a novelty, <laughs> because the guys can do it five times faster, carry 99 freaking 2 by 4s on their shoulder, a woman can't do that, Did, go search a video about the female SWAT team, they, they entered an all-female SWAT team, into a, a SWAT competition. Go watch that video. And who do you want showing up at your door? They couldn't make it through the first challenge. And but they're all armed and on duty. <laughs> you know, the world is never gonna be run by women. It's never gonna be the Barbie world. It's it's just the bottom line. It's it's just never ever gonna happen. And you don't want it to happen. You know, you don't want, men don't want that to happen because we care about you. <laughs> we don't want you in harm's way, you know? You know, we want to walk on the outside of the street so we get hit by the car first, not you, you know? That's why we want to open doors for you, you know? I, I don't know. Whole nother subject. Anyway. Da -da 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 -da. It is different when you accept the man in your home. Well, why is he in your home? That that's said. Let's address that real quick, fellas. Never move into a woman's home, never, because she will call the shots. It'll never be your home, and she can kick you out into your home. When does a woman invite a man into her home? What clown world is that, <laughs> fellas? You know. Either she moves in with you or you get a place and you say, this is where we're going to make your nest, baby. You know? You got to move in with a... Move a man into you. That's... that's yikes. Who? What kind of... Anecdotal. <sighs> I got to write that shit down. Anecdotal is the exact word I was looking for. Thank you. That is anecdotal. I had a, oh, I had a one woman fix my roof once. That's anecdotal. That, that is next to meaningless. It's just a anecdote. <laughs> it's not the norm. 
It's not the norm. Anecdotal. Thank you very, very much. Whew. Da, 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 da. How would you accept a man in your home? I mean, that that's... Except a man in your home. The only reason a dude should be going to a woman's home is to knock boots. <laughs> you know, other than that, don't do it. I, just don't do it. Actually, men can survive lo much longer than women. The only thing is we can't reproduce. You know? But... I mean, go look at Survivor, not the new purple hair, frickin' rainbow flag, frickin' version of Survivor that's coming out next week. That's a joke. That's a pandering bunch of bullshit. But, um, go look at all the, like, the men versus women Survivor things. Men, on the first night, we got fires and tents and... You know, we made our own bug repellent, we skewered a few fishes, we're already eaten, and the women are just like... Let's, we, I think we better go with the boys over there. Let's show a little cleavage so they give us a fish. It's just the way it's supposed to be. Yeah. Women have been sold a lie that they, they're, they're basically men. But you're not men. You, there's so much that you're better at, like being a mother. We can't be mothers. <laughs> you know, why, why is children a side hustle now for the modern woman? Children are a side hustle. You're supposed to... It's just a checkbox. Career, diploma, career, side hustle, kids, Louis Vuitton bag. It's just a freaking side hustle. It's the most important thing a female can do on the planet is birth and nurture and bring children into the world. No, it's a side hustle now. Hmm. Men are a part of society, but stay out of our personal... With an attitude like that, I hope men are staying out of your personal space. Because you don't deserve a man if that's your attitude. You're gonna just... How many cats do you have? I mean, I appreciate the compliment about my blue eyes, but... Won't see him. <laughs> won't see him in your place. Stay out of our personal space. Wow, that's trippy. Da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. Yeah, it's just a cat lady and training level bullshit. Get your cats. <laughs> then stay out of my. You sound like you. You sound like you have like. So you have a lot of testosterone, and that's a lot of masculine energy. No wonder you have problems. That's like, what guy What guy wants to dick measure with a woman, you know? That's not what we're here for. A woman's supposed to be, supposed to compliment a man. You know what a woman's supposed to be? Everything a man is not. You know what a man is supposed to be? Everything a woman is not. You know what men are really good at? Being men. You know what women are really, really good at? Being women. But nowadays, you guys have been sold that lie about we don't need no man. Okay. Are you are you happy? No. <laughs> you know, I think men get the last laugh on that one, but anyway. Ah, uh, your high value woman wants a baby. What do you have to say about that? Um, yeah, if it's like something that you want, if you want children, I don't have a problem with that. Yeah, and welcome to cleaning freaking litter boxes the rest of your life. Stay out of my personal space. <laughs> I find it amusing. I mean, I'm not, you know, I didn't want to pick on you, but, you know, toxic feminism is destroying this country. Because it's freaking toxic. It's, it's, how would I say? Like, for as much as people say, uh, misogyny, ooh, that's the word that just got my my video demonetized. Whatever. Misandry. It's the same thing, right? 
It's the same thing. All men suck. No man is worthy. I'll keep you around and do this. Stay out of my personal space. That's, that's like, that's such dude energy. What do you want to be a dude for? I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't know, whatever. I mean, but then this dude's the one that that got all that feminine energy, too. Dudes with feminine energy. And I'm not talking the, this ideology. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the energy. You know, like guys who are like, who whine a lot. Women who are trying to act like men and men. I'm not talking about like the transcontinental railroad. I'm not talking about that. I'm just talking about the energy because I know some dudes who are like, you know, come off as tough guys, but they have a lot of that feminine energy, that that nitpicky kind of, you know. I know, I know, I know dudes who, when they're around dudes, they're like all freaking macho and shit, and they get around their woman and they're freaking naggy. They're, they're like nags. Like women, like men say they hate naggy women. They become nag. Like that's a lot of feminine energy. That's just not something a man should be doing. You know, that's what I mean. I'm not talking about the other thing. That's for the other channel. But yeah, why, you know, the, the male energy and mm, naggy dudes. Imagine a dude who's a naggy, just nags you and nags you and nags you. When are you gonna do this? When are you gonna do that? When are you gonna do this? Oh my god. <laughs> and the same kind of dudes who say things like yummy and comfy. <laughs> That's so feminine. But anyway, feminine energy. The art of being a man's man has to freaking come back at some point. Or we're doomed. But anyway, I think I'm gonna jet. What time is it? It is kind of... Oh, yeah. So, I appreciate that. That was a lot of fun. I hope you had fun, too. And I like to always the last half hour because we always go down a rabbit hole or two. And, yeah, there'll be more about that on... We'll go down these rabbit holes on my, my own platform. And I can show you statistics about stuff like this, too. Because this can be quantified. Anyway, tomorrow night is... Saturday night, we're gonna go see the Volcano Show, we're gonna do a whole bunch of stuff, we're gonna get out on the strip and have us some fun, I'm looking forward to it, but this is fun too, and I love you guys, so, one last time, I'm gonna invite you to like, share, subscribe, and hit that bell button to get notified when I do this again, which is at least five times a week, and if you want to support the channel, you know what to do, stuff, 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 and stuff, and don't forget to sign up for my new streaming platform, Raw Frederick, Raw and Uncensored, there's a link in the description, and uh, that nope. Ugh. Roar for the gout.